Well, good morning. Welcome to Chaos of Block Party. <laughs> Welcome to outdoor worship. Welcome to all the fun things. Welcome here to Christ Church. Whether you're passing us on the street and engaging with us, whether you'd normally be inside with us on Sunday mornings, or however you have found us. Welcome here to Christ Church where we continue on a journey together with Christ, questioning, serving, and growing. Hopefully you all have found the awkward eight and a half by 11 bulletin that I have put out this morning. I will call on one of you to read scripture so that I have a little bit of a break this morning. Excellent. It should be on the bulletin. Um, but for now, I invite you to um, open, open up the Faith We Sing If You Have It to number 2236 as we engage in this half, uh, half sung, half spoken call to worship. So the, the L parts are for me to read, the P parts are for you to say, and then we will sing a verse of Gather Us In after each. So, we come from far and near to this community of faith. Lord, draw us together in celebration of your love. And let us sing the first verse of this hymn that a bunch of us know. What number? What number? 2236. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here in this place, a new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this place our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call us anew and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. Let's continue with the call to worship. We are young, old, middle-aged. We are rich, comfortable, poor, struggling. Let us sing the second verse of this hymn. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lonely. Give us the courage to enter the song. As we continue with our call to worship, now is the time of celebration. God is with us. Now is the time of rejoicing. God's love is poured over us. And now let us sing verse 4 to finish this up. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place, the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make 
us your hope. Gather us in, O peoples, together. Heart and heart, love in heart, flesh and heart, bone. Well, since we're outside, we're doing things a little bit differently, and we have a little bit of a different order of worship. So. I encourage you to join your hearts with mine in prayer as we continue along. Gracious and loving God, thank you for a break in the storms here. Thank you for a time to pause and to gather with old friends, with new friends, with whoever may stop by. God, may we graciously welcome all who come to our event today. May we graciously engage with all the varying states of needs and life that we exhibit. God, may we graciously engage with all of your creation, no matter how we are found today, whether we are happy, whether we are anxious, whether we are eager just to feed some people and have some fun. Let us enjoy our time today. Let us enjoy our time in your presence. And let us always remember to pause and celebrate, for you call us to do wonderful things as we build your kingdom, O God. O God. Amen. So if I had everything together this morning, we would have heard some uh, wonderful music that Melora recorded for us as prelude and postlude music. And since Melora does such a wonderful job of playing music during the passing of the peace, I found that we need to do something a little bit different today. There is a good old camp song called A La La La, and it is kind of an instructional mode of passing the peace. So I encourage you to sing along with me. I will give you uh, a few prompts of how to greet each other, but uh, otherwise feel free to pass the peace and love of Christ among yourselves as I kind of sing this silly song. La 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 Shake a friend's hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake a friend's hand and sing this song. Shake a friend's hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake a friend's hand and sing. And sing along. We'll do it two more times. They're silly. Feel free to participate optionally. <laughs> touch a friend's forehead, touch a forehead next to you. Touch a friend's forehead and sing this song. Touch a friend's forehead, touch a forehead next to you. Touch a friend's forehead and sing. And sing along. Bump a friend's rump, bump a rump next to you. Bump a friend's rump and sing this song. Bump a friend's rump, bump a rump next to you. Bump a friend's rump and sing. And sing along. Ah, la 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 la
Not passing of the peace, but hopefully it was just as interesting. Aspie, did you want to read? All right, excellent. We are getting there. Today's scripture will be selections from um, Matthew 18. If you come back next week, you will uh, find us picking up for the second half of Matthew chapter 18. But this, I would have gotten into more complexities if this were normal church. But because it's not normal church, I've taken some liberties with how we're selecting this. The disciples came up to Jesus with the question, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called for a little child to come and stand among them. Then Jesus said, the truth is, unless you change and become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Those who make themselves as humble as the child are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. See, you, see that you never despise one of these little ones for I swear that their angels in heaven are continually, continually in the presence of my Abba God. The promised one has come to sa save what was lost. What do you think? Suppose the shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them strays away. Won't the shepherd leave the ninety-nine on the hillside to go in search of the stray? If the shepherd finds it, the truth is, there is more joy over the one found than over the ninety-nine that didn't stray. In the same way, it is never the will of, the, of our Abba God in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The truth is, whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare lo loosed on earth, on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth join in an agreement to pray for, the, for anything whatsoever, it will be granted to you by our parenting God in heaven. Where two or three, of, three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. I didn't plan for that scripture to be illustrated quite so appropriately, but I appreciate it nonetheless. I, over the past few months, I've been talking more and more about relationships as we engage with each other in faith. Over the past few, and few months, I've been talking more and more about sort of the squidginess of us as people and how God accepts that and uses that and brings the best out of some situations nonetheless. This is somewhat of the same. What does it mean that Jesus is calling us to be both sheep and children, things that are not necessarily the most favorably associated in the world, but also what does it look like to be found? And how do we know that God is here? Like I said, I've skipped around some of the passages in chapter 18. I, I hope that if you read that first part of the chapter at any point up to verse 20 where we stopped, you'll find that I am holding true to the context instead of just hopping around and proof texting. But I feel like this gave us the appropriate gist for this morning. In a resource of behavioral covenants and congregations, this passage is highlighted as a guide for congregations, people of faith, to figure out how to live in community. It's not a big ask that Jesus is making. Jesus is asking us to not forget the children, to value each person, to engage and be as humble and accepting as a child is. But yet, that seems 
difficult at times. It seems hard to engage with ourselves, reminding ourselves that we ought to be childish sometimes, at least in our acceptance of others. But nonetheless, Jesus asks us to be children, to be sheep, and to engage with the world that way. Again, I think this text is primarily about relationships. Relationships are hard to maintain no matter whether it's fam familial, whether it is with friends, whether it is romantic partners. Relationships cause some of the best aspects of life, but also bring out some of the worst in us at times. Relationships are hard work. I, I would even argue it is most of the work we're called to do over the case of our life. Hopefully, we spend more than 80,000 hours maintaining relationships compared to the 80,000 hours we're often called to spend in a career of any sort. And a part of that is being lost. A part of that journey is figuring out what you have done wrong and coming around to correct it, to mend the relationship, to join anew. I have so many stories that have been relayed to me from my childhood. I was an impertinent child. Yes, I accepted folks. Yes, I was excited about all the things. Yes, I was distractible. And that is, I think, what Jesus calls us to in some ways. But Jesus does not call you to... Uh, one of the stories from Little Meadows was that I locked myself in the bathroom one day as a toddler. The church thought I had run away down the street, so they ended church early in order for the entire congregation to search for me, the pastor's kid, who they could not find for the life of them. People went in half-mile circles around the church until somebody finally checked the bathroom and found little toddler Paul had been sitting there for about an hour just to enjoy himself. <laughs> We are sometimes very lost human beings, and sometimes it takes a toddler to see the simple ways that we are lost and the simple ways that we can be found. Sometimes life is more complex than just checking the bathroom before wandering a half mile around the church, but sometimes it is that simple. Sometimes we're called to look towards those simple accepting answers. This text calls us not to win, but calls us to seek reconciliation. This text calls us to look for that one aspect that is lost, not forsaking or forgetting about all the other good parts of life, but in that very Wesleyan way, wandering ever closer towards perfection, looking for that one random sheep that seems out of place, but also remembering that we are called to care and to hold so much together over the course of life. Whether it looks like finding a sheep that is lost, whether it looks like just not intentionally tripping people up in the world, I feel like we do this wonderfully well as a congregation, and I feel like this will be a wonderful event to care for anybody who wanders by, no matter what they're looking for, whether it's playing a little bit of can jam or tippet, or whether it's just looking for a hamburger. There are ways that we can care for ourselves as well as others. One more story and then I'll wrap this up. I wandered away from home a whole lot. It, it is kind of sad. Um, there was one time when we were up on the St. Lawrence where I had had enough of family. I wanted my own space. So seven-year-old Paul went down to the dock, untied a paddle boat, and made for Canada. Uh, I didn't quite get to Canada. I didn't quite get out of the bay. After about 30 minutes of, of paddling, you know how paddle boats are so slow. I ended up going past the marina that's at the mouth of the bay, where the marina owner was sitting on the dock with a phone with my mother on the line asking if he had seen me go by. Offered me some, uh, some bubble gum and some kind words and then sent me turned around back to the dock where my family was. Sometimes it's just as much about finding ourselves, understanding that we need a rest when we need a rest, but also need to engage when we need to engage in other ways. I pray that we will have the grace to engage with Christ, that we may be found whenever we need finding, that we may have the grace to look for others and help. 
put another puzzle piece together for whatever their need may be that day. And I pray that we can do all of this with the humility and acceptance of a child who is just curious about the world. So with that, I changed the order of this enough that I don't know what's next. <laughs> we get another hymn. Excellent. Um, this hymn is in the faith we sing. I'm going to sing a, a verse of it that's not in the faith we sing. We've sung it at church a number of times, so hopefully we should know it. But I encourage you to join me in singing Bind Us Together. We'll go through the chorus three times and, and the verses just once. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Find us together, Lord, find us together, Lord, find us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we sing. Find us together, Lord, find us together with words that cannot be broken. Find us together, Lord, find us together, Lord, find us together with love. We are the family of God. We are part of God's church. We are salt, light, and friends. So we sing to our God. Find us together, Lord, find us together with words that cannot be broken. Find us together, Lord, find us together, Lord, find us together with love. So with that, are there any joys or concerns you want to share with each other today? Are there things that you want those around you to celebrate with you or to pray with you about? I will share, I am useless at praying for weather. Every time anybody has asked me to pray for good weather, it has utterly failed. So I distinctly did not pray for good weather here, and I hope you're all appreciative of that. I'm great with inanimate objects, but not with the weather. But are there any joys or concerns you'd like to, to share among yourselves? Yeah. Keep the people of Morocco. The people of Morocco who suffered a devastating earthquake after other devastating earthquakes have taken place around the world. Are there other joys or concerns you want to pray about? Seeing none, let's join in prayer as we work to close this worship. Gracious and loving God, thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for tying this community together. Whether it's through this event, whether it's through the college block party, whether it's through other inexplicable means of connection. Thank you for bringing people together. God, may you continue to support all who are dealing with tragedies in their lives. Whether that's a hurricane rolling through their town, whether that's the earth shaking beneath them, destroying everything. May you continue to bring people together that we may build your kingdom amongst us as our communities seek to rebuild the world around them. God, through all the festivity and excitement today, may we keep your loving, gracious kingdom in our hearts. May we remember to share your grace 
to engage peacefully with all who gather and to seek justification rather than rightness. God, continue to bless those who wish they could be with us. Continue to bless those who are helping here. And may you send your spirits that we may be filled with joy no matter how we engage with today. For in your name we pray. Amen. And though we have much work to do yet, let us go forth with joy and peace as we endeavor to have a bit of a party here. And let us remember that party brings us together and fortifies our relationships with our community. So let us do this work with peace and grace today. Amen. I thought I'd only be 20 minutes.